two large standards committee. Have we uh, got any apologies for absence? Uh, we've got apologies from Councillor Hale and Councillor Gilchrist, uh, substituted by Councillor Ellison and Councillor Brickhouse. Okay. Um, okay. Any members got any interest? No. 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 Item three then, minutes, pages one to eight.
compared to two or three years ago, <coughs> that would have been done. Would you like to it, Yes, sir. I think um, it's a fair point, but I think it needs to be seen in context. I think the issues that we experienced previously, and it is over two years, possibly three years ago now, um, some of the issues that we did encounter then, I don't think we're encountering now. The system isn't perfect, and I think we, uh, from time to time, there are issues that arise, but the matters that I deal with and, and monitor um, overall, the performance has been very good in terms of dealing with complaints. It doesn't mean that the, the, the approach and, and the process sometimes isn't uh, without its difficulties from time to time, but um, I think we have turned the corner a little while ago in terms of how we manage these issues, and, uh, and one of the successes around how we do manage the standards of complaints is very much around the informal uh, mechanisms that are available to try and resolve matters between the complainant and the subject council, and that has proven to be quite successful in a number of particular cases. So I, I, I take the point that there's always room for improvement and we're endeavouring to, to do that. Um, and, and I'll pick this up as part of the review that we do annually with the working group to see how we can improve that and look at how, whether it's the timescales, whether there's other resource issues, and how do we ensure that we continually improve, because I think we're not where we were previously, far from it. I think um, this is a, a, a slight blip in, in, in generally the, the performance, but that doesn't mean that we can't explore how we can improve. I think we should. I don't want to leave it, but you know, we, we are where we were two or three years ago, but then we don't get the amount of complaints that we did get two or three years ago. I think that's fair to say. That's why we're not where we are. But, but you know, there's no reason the complaint shouldn't be dealt with quickly and efficiently and resolved. And you know, anything 12 months or longer simply is unacceptable. No, I, I think no one recognises that uh, a 12 months period is a long time, and that's something that we want to repeat. Um, but we do get still a fair few um, of our complaints, um, and, and as you know, I bring an annual report to you, providing a summary, um, an anonymised summary of the complaints, so you can monitor that. But as I say, I, I'm more than happy to, uh, if you're the indulgence chair, to raise this issue as we will as part of the annual review of the protocol as well as the code of conduct. Okay. Okay. Jerry, do you want to mention something else? Yes, a quick one. Yeah. Um, very, very much appreciate Joe's apologies. What we're really looking for is a notification of some change in the procedures so we don't have to apologise. And what, 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 what I'd want to know is if somebody goes off ill as you did and I'm sorry they got off, yeah, do we not have alternative arrangements? But not a lot of people that can do this while people are after that. Yes, I mean, one of the things that we're currently doing is we're having restructured, we are recruiting uh, two more staff, and one of those, a couple of those people will be individuals who, who will be able to assist. So if we do have issues of this kind in the future, there will be a, a, not a massive pool of resource available, but more resource than we have currently to help ensure that these types of matters are progressed in some disasters. We can't take one away. Take one more than we have. Yeah, I think this is, this is an ideal situation where the working group needs to have a look at it and needs to look at some solutions. But going forward, in mind of what they just said about this, we go to people. How do we put a protocol forward so that we deal with these in the, the most speedy manner that we can? I think that's, that's basically it. It's put us away from group and let's come up with a full paper that's set, format the way we can actually deal with these things that we have a set format. And then it gives officers and complainants and complainees a real clarity around the process. Well, not, there's not that clarity around the process. It goes into the system and then it depends on whether it's available to do it or not. But we often want to see, because what you know we do, we keep having this perpetual uh, answer here going around and around and around and get back to the same question. And that's always going to be the case, and that's what we want to encourage, because 
standards and the, the, the level of standards, the promotion of standards and indeed how they are dealt with. It's really a matter for members and members need to own and control that particular issue. Um, what I would want to do as wandering officer is to ensure that the arrangements in place facilitate the outcomes that we're looking for and, and the working group provides a, a platform for those frank and open exchange of views and thoughts so that we can look at how we can address the issue and look at the most effective way of working. Thank you, Chairman. If we could just answer the council that the system we have in place is robust. The fact is, on the other opposite side, we have not followed the protocol. But this whole committee, not a working group, put together two or three years ago, quite clear, quite straightforward, well documented, and officers have ignored it. Overall, it's fair to say that the members of the panel have worked really hard and I think 
from an officer point of view, the process has worked really, really well overall. <coughs> the panel over the past couple of years have got to grips with some really difficult, complex and contentious uh, issues. Uh, so that's been very successful. However, the main reason for this report is, is that aside of some of the significant highway traffic proposals that have taken uh, due consideration, sometimes we do have quite a number of very, very minor traffic orders and things that we want to do, where sometimes we'll only get one representation or objection, and all the other members are in complete support. Um, we do get quite a few of those in a given year, and it can sometimes have implications on our ability to deliver our capital programme and to get all of our schemes and projects delivered on the ground. So essentially what this report is suggesting is it's seeking views from members and the idea would be that very similar to the planning committee approach, I think you'll see there on page 10, uh, section 3.2 near the bottom, what we're proposing is that um, unless we get a petition of more than 25 signatures or unless we get uh, 15 or more individual objections or also very importantly unless the um, uh, reward members actually support the scheme as well um, if, if any of those thresholds are met or if the ward councils are not happy with the proposal then it would be taken to a meeting with the panel in a normal way Having said that, anything that below those thresholds and where the ward members are happy, the idea here is that the chair would be the authority would pass to myself in discussion with the cabinet member to then make a decision on the proposal. Uh, I think really just for reassurance, this is aimed at what can be quite a, uh, in a typical year, uh, probably the large proportion of non-contentious items where ward members are completely happy with the proposal and we've literally had just one or two representations made uh, so it would be purely any situations like that. I have to take any questions. Yeah, I'm not opposed to this. I think it just needs a slightly different wording that I would suggest. You, you talk about it's going to be similar to the scheme delegation planning. Planning to have a website that, that show every member in the ward gets uh, an accolade, email alert when a planning application appears in their ward. There's also a website where you can search for planning applications. You can be made aware, you can be, well, be, become aware of these things very quickly. How would you make members aware of a potential representation in the ward that would transport issue? That's, that's one question. So if you're going to try and replicate planning, then you need to come up with something that alerts members to the potential. I also noted there, Mark, that the, you know, in, the, in this it says, in consultation with the cabinet highways and transport would have delegated authority. We also talked about ward members. So would it be in consultation with the, with the, with the, with the cabinet member and ward members, or cabinet member and party spokesperson, rather than just cabinet member? It's just something to throw in. And, and, I would take out, because you're saying in there 25 or more secrecies from individual households, planning now just take petitions of 25 signatures, regardless of households, so just delete from individual households. I, I would say two, not 25. And the final thing in 3.3, appropriate for that to take that delegation, include valid traffic management reasons and support the objection. I would just say include valid reasons and support the objection. <coughs> We're not highways engineers. What do we know of you know, valid traffic management? You know, we, we see things as we see them from a layman's point of view, not as you see them from a, from a highways officer's point of view. So, so I think it's a great idea. I think it will cut down the way it tremendously. I just think it needs a bit of time to come up on the way. No, I think there's plenty of points in there. There's nothing fundamental that is uh, being suggested there, which is just uh, three, three years <coughs> ahead, this we're just mentioned just very briefly. So just on the uh, core process for communication with board members is um, a two-step process. So whenever we're looking at advertising the proposal, the traffic order, 
So ward members should get a notification at that stage. Yes. And then when the objections and representations come in, uh, when, we, when we put together that draft report, at the moment that also goes to ward members as well. Uh, but uh, so we do do that, but I think certainly, Chair, we just uh, obviously I just you know, made a note we've picked up on some of those comments, and uh, I think you're absolutely right. So that could just be tied up slightly. We can look to do that, obviously. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Thank you. Great. Okay. Is that a great deal? We've made those changes. Happy to agree with those changes. Okay. Agree then. takes us to item 5.
We then um, looked at changes to the Employment and Employment terms, uh, Committee's Terms of Reference, um, just to broaden that so that EMA also then considered dealing with matters around um, policies and schemes related to workforce and employment issues, monitoring workforce performance and management matters, um, and the Chair having authority to make minor amendments to policies and schemes as appropriate, uh, and the working group was content with those suggestions. Um, the scheme of delegations to officers, um, that was really just to update statutory provisions in the main, um, a greater degree of flexibility so that other officers uh, within uh, the council can exercise those functions. So that was more just to update the existing delegations that council has already agreed. Uh, and finally, Chair, uh, we looked at also then the procedure for dealing with referred notices of the motion. And again, another area that the working group debated as to whether the mayor uh, should continue uh, referring uh, notices of the motion to a committee or cabinet or the leader for consideration, um, if he considers it is appropriate to do so. Um, and whilst there was a debate as to whether that is uh, appropriate and should continue, um, there was still a, an issue with regards to ensuring consistency where notices of motions are referred to a committee. Uh, and this process of uh, procedure simply sets out uh, and, and hopefully provides a useful guide for all committee chairs and members um, to follow in the event that they are dealing with a referred notice of motion. Uh, as the final picture, again, is just the outstanding work programme for the working for you to consider, uh, and these are focusing on the ethical framework uh, in, 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 in largely the code of conduct, the protocol that we talked about earlier, uh, and how we program the high standards, and also the members' ICT policy, which is the chief of the fresh. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner, I'll turn to you. My apologies, Jerry. Did I get a copy of the Parties of Crime app since we left it here? I thought that would be the case. Oh, thanks. Um, thanks, Jerry.
Mr. Chair, can I move the first and push the members again? I'm, I'm happy to move the amendment that we vote on each uh, amendment that set out in Appendix 1 so that we can agree unanimously with those parts that we all agree with, but register our concern with those parts that certain members disagree with. Second. Okay. All of them, if what it is, is someone going to say something? Well, <coughs> you want some separate votes? Can I just be clear what you have to... Well, just to... On, on, on well, you want some separate votes? I have no problem at all. Well, yeah, if you right. register your, your vote against those areas you don't agree with. So if it's only a separate vote you want on those. Then you if you want to take an out, then I'm sorry I'm not going to... No, 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 I'm not going to... If you look at Appendix 1 more, yeah, you've yeah. got all these amendments. Yeah, okay. You know, amendment 1, amendment 2, amendment 3. No, don't object to that. It's just a matter of voting against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the matter of all, how many... Well, that's a chair. I'll go to... Have you said that? Do you want... No, no problem. No, it's not a problem. Not as unfair as... No, I'm not. In fairness, we all do. You can tell us because I've got to say this. I've got to say all this. We've had all of discussion, so I don't expect to hold it back. But in fairness to everybody, everyone done a good job from all everybody that on hand to take this way here. Yeah. So just the votes. Just the votes. Yeah, just and the vote. votes. And the votes either for or against. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Ron. Yes, 
Thank you. Thank you very much. 